Hello, Ken Spriggs here with part three of my Mobius Ares 1B build. Quite a lot of progress coming along. Uh, actually, I got a lot more done than I'm going to show in this video. So a lot more footage for the next video already in the can and a lot more work being done. So uh, getting really close to finishing up this model uh, as far as um, getting the model part done. I still have to work on uh, part of the base and I will be discussing that uh, in a future build as well about the base. Uh, and just to give you a little bit of, a, of a, a test preview, I'll show you here an image in a moment. Um, but um, Augie Gonzalez, my good friend uh, from Interstellar Modeler, is, uh, well he already has, painted a painting for me to act as a backdrop for my model. And I'm very excited about it, it turned out beautifully. It's a, uh, it's two foot long by one foot high, and I'm going to incorporate it into a wooden base that I'm going to suspend the model from to look like it's the famous scene where it's, it's dropping down and its legs opened up and it's dropping down and you can see the partial earth in the background in space and you see the, the lunar, the lunar uh, surface uh, from a height. And so I'll show some images of that here in a moment. Uh, but he has really been been trying his hand and very successfully at painting oil paintings so uh, he did a fantastic job for me he's going to be bringing that with him to Wonderfest which he'll be attending and I will build the rest of the base in a future video to uh, to fit that painting onto it behind it so all right so uh, also uh, I completed quite a bit on the outer painting for the ship and uh, and I'll be doing some of the interior and starting that and um, I'll also be talking a lot about this model and its history, the actual filming model here uh, in a midpoint in this video. And, um, and we'll go ahead and take a look at that as well. So let's go ahead and take a look, first of all, at the amazing painting that Augie Gonzalez from Interstellar Modeler had made for me. All right, so as I showed from the previous stills, <clears throat> I took this back off. None of this is glued on. The top isn't glued on. These parts here are not glued together permanently. They just have certain parts in the inside glued in as I showed previously. So it was easier to take this apart, go back in and paint this inner part darker and leave this part the gray that I had attained with it. I did the same thing with the, uh, the rim around the cockpit there. And I think what these do is they just add more character. It gives you like a forced shadow for the windows and that, and it just kind of pops out some of the looks. So uh, I also went ahead and I put a flat coat onto the bottom to kind of test it. And it turned out fairly good. I just wanted to make sure because I don't want to mess up the coloring on the top here so far. Uh, putting a flat coat tends to do that sometimes. Not a flat coat, I'm sorry. I have put a um, semi-gloss. I have Tamiya semi-gloss clear. And this is a lacquer. So the reason I'm doing this is because the next thing I want to try to do, at least on the bottom, is I want to do some weathering with oils. And certainly on these pieces here. They have some heavy like drips and stains coming down from these things. And... With oils and oil paints that I do, they tend to, well, they will soak right into flat paint. And it looks it looks more unnatural. It doesn't look the way I want it to, which is a leave the pigments on the top, on the surface, and you're able to move them around and make it look like an actual oil drip that's coming down and have some, some character to it. Uh, so there's going to be a lot more oiling on the bottom, oiling, <laughs> a lot more weathering with the oils on the engines, of course, in the bottom. And on these pieces and even on the legs and the feet than there were going to be on the main sphere 
the main sphere is going to be a little different so we'll take a little different approach with that so I will wait and see if I want to put a flat coat over that or not or a semi-gloss coat but you can see there is a little bit of discoloration which in this case is fine it doesn't hurt anything but for the most part and it made it a little bit darker down towards the bottom I also got these plates on the bottom because there's a lot of staining and and weathering at the bottom of those as well quite a bit on those all right so you can see it didn't really affect the engines too much as far as the colors i did the feet as well foot pads because those have a lot of dirt and the, i'll do the same on the legs at some point and get those painted all right so Definitely coming along, and the key to this is just layers, layers, layers of different things. Uh, take your time, let each one dry so you can take a look at it and see how it looks before you progress on to the next stage of it. But you definitely want a lot of things to catch your eye. Uh, and then when you look further away, it's going to look more of the overall light gray or as a lot of people interpret it being white, it's not really white, but it's definitely a very, very light gray altogether. So, all right. All right, so I did want to show the bottom. So it did darken up those engine columns a little bit more. Uh, certainly the these ones, the engines themselves <clears throat> and the nozzles, I already wanted to be darker, but a lot of that darkness I'm gonna achieve with powders rather than using using paint, weathering powders. <clears throat> and then the oil washes, not washes so much, but the oil weathering I'm going to do on those engine columns down inside there. And then the feet, the foot pads. Let's see if I can show this one. Okay, so you can see that one. A little bit of discoloration from the flat or the gloss coat. But again, that's not a problem because that's what I'm going for anyway in these. So I'm not that worried about it. And kind of the whole idea that you're going to want to achieve is that the bottom is going to be the darkest and the dirtiest because, again, this is one big massive engine <laughs> coming out of the bottom of this sphere. And then progressively it's going to get a little cleaner as you go further up. So those, those plates there are going to still be dirty and, and scorched and burnt and have, you know, spills and washes and things like that on them. Uh, but then as you go further up, it's going to get less pronounced and I'm going to do more of the weathering where I have different shades of panels and that kind of thing. All right, looking pretty cool. Alright, so I went back on to the sphere part and I'm adding in some very light gray panels. And I'm just using some sections of tape and I'm just randomly putting them over different panels and airbrushing a neutral gray on, very fine. Some a little thicker, some a little lighter. And I did it over the whole surface and just randomly picked out some panels. So then what I'm going to do is once I, I do a little bit more additional airbrushing i'm going to go back over everything with a with a, a flat white again to blend this in i just want these to be very very subtly different shades in some of these panels uh, rather than having some very distinct ones like it is on the discovery all right so i went i went around just on the parts of the sphere so these parts here obviously the top down that kind of thing all right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a few spots with some rubber black I want to try using that rather than the flat black and I just want to do a little bit of some of the the scorching like in these areas here around these maybe a little bit on the tips of the of the um, the nozzles there and again some of this is gonna be brought back with the white and then I'll augment it with some some weathering powders as well, so. All right. All 
All right, and then there's a white blending coat over all of those extra panels that I added. So I blended them back down. So you can still see that there's some definite different panels, but they're not quite as distinct as they were before. Sorry for the shadow. And definitely brings the ship back into the really light gray or the white range. But gives it a lot more character. I did the same on the sides and it really does look a lot whiter in the camera it's hard not to get it to look that way it's see if I can take it down a bit that just makes it darker it really is a very light gray and it's still in that in that light gray range but those panels that I took out are still slightly visible sticking out a little bit making it look like you have a lot more detail going on all right so i'm gonna let that sit overnight let that fully dry and take a look at it again the key to this is just doing layer after layer after layer being patient taking your time letting it fully dry because it does look a little different once it fully dries and then going back over and looking at it some more figuring out if you want to do some more things so I haven't done any real weathering at this point, so there's going to definitely be someone here. Well, I take it back. I did do a little bit of the scorching, and even some of that got kicked back up when I put some white over it. But I'm going to end up doing that again with some, some black weathering powders. But it still is very subtle, even on the, the actual ship. It's not a big garish black spot. It's, it's just more of a hint, as though definitely these... These little um, nozzles would be putting out some heat and some whatever it's burning. And it would leave some residue wherever it hits. All right, so looking pretty good. Definitely coming to, coming closer to where I want the exterior to look. And I still have to work on the bottom and do the, um, do some oils and, and make the engines look more realistic as well. All right, so I want to take a little bit of a, of a uh, departure here for a moment and talk a little bit about the history of the model of the Ares 1B. Uh, if you go out there on Facebook and you go out there and you look at different builds from different modelers, there's a whole variety of opinions and ideas about the different colors of the of the model, the ship itself, the colors of the cock the cockpit or the the uh, passenger section. Uh, I don't want to say it's controversial because I don't think it's to that level, but certainly there's a lot of opinions out there as to what, what they look like. Now, the difficulty here being that this is a model from a film, uh, and the the total time that this ship appears on film is a little less than eight minutes, which uh, isn't a whole lot in terms of the rest of the film, but it has a crucial part. There's a lot of things introduced uh, through the Ares 1B, uh, definitely more on the theme of anti-gravity, not anti-gravity, of uh, a spaceship being in space wouldn't have gravity. So they, they definitely look at a lot of that with the stewardess walking up the side of the, the ring to go into the cockpit, which is straight up from, from the passenger section, which is an odd design, but certainly could be done in a spaceship that doesn't rely upon gravity uh, when it's in flight most of the time. Uh, other things that were involved uh, are that when Kubrick filmed it, he filmed it with uh, very bright tungsten lights, which he did to create some very harsh shadows to make it look like it was in space. And you get that bright sunlight without any diffusion through an atmosphere and that kind of thing. So he put a lot of work and a lot of intelligence into coming up with these shots that he wanted. But, uh, but at the same time, a lot of times the model looks different in different ways and the interior as well. There's a lot of different things going on, which um, I'll talk about a little bit later. So I wanted to get some more info on this. And I was, uh, I was talking to or chatting with someone on Facebook. And they had mentioned uh, certain things that I had painted that, um, that were not correct. For example, the, the window frames that I made a, a darker, I made it like a dark gray. And the, the frame around the cockpit. And he said that that's supposed to be black. So I, I responded back and said, it, they don't really look black in the pictures. And then he kind of explained and talked about it a bit. Uh, well, the conversation led to, um, to him actually uh, 
knowing and having conversed with uh, a man named Adam Johnson, who wrote a, uh, an excellent book called 2001, The Lost Science. So he was actually able to put me in contact with him. And we've, uh, we've had two phone calls now at this point and talked quite a bit about the model itself, uh, which still exists and is in uh, a museum in California for the, um, I always get it wrong, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, I believe it is. <clears throat> but it's one of the few surviving models from the film. And uh, so we discussed it in, at length and talked about it and talked about a lot of the coloring that was used and the model itself and what happened to it. So I want to kind of give you a little bit of history just to sort of put it into perspective because there's a lot of, there are a lot of pictures out there and some of them may not actually represent what the model really looks like or did look like. And certainly you want to be careful not to try to emulate, uh, you know, the images that you might see in those photos. So just as a basic understanding. So when the film had wrapped, the models were put away in storage into crates and there was an arrangement with Fred Ordway the third who was the scientific consultant on 2001 he had an arrangement with Kubrick where he wanted to put the models into a museum in Washington DC that he was going to put together and have an exhibit and he was going to display them so they had a contract uh, now later on Kubrick had uh, decided not to do that and he backed out of the contract and it never really went forward. So they never actually went into this exhibit. So according to, um, to Adam, when we talked about it, at one point uh, before this was supposed to happen, Ordway had gone to England where the models were stored and he had pulled out the models and were looking at them. So the, the Aries had started to fall into disrepair and some of the parts had come off, like the model pieces had broken off. They were still there, but they just weren't where they were supposed to be. So from what he states, there was um, a gentleman hired who I guess was not really a professional model maker or builder to go in there and try to, try to fix it up. So he glued some of these parts back on and some of them were in the wrong place. Uh, in addition, and even worse, he, he went ahead and repainted it. So he just took uh, spray cans of flat white and spray cans of flat black, mostly sprayed the whole upper sphere of it just white, which obviously would have marred a lot of the, the subtle detail that was put onto it and the different shading, and then painted the engines just really black. So apparently there are some photos after that fact that were in, that are still available and, and you can go out and see, but they're, they're not representative of what it looks like because of this poorly done painting. Uh, then after that, after the whole thing fell apart and there was not going to be an exhibit, they ended up going back to Kubrick, who at some point apparently had given the Aries 1B to a school teacher in England to use, I guess, as educational in his classes. So it ended up going into a pottery barn and it sat in there for about 40 years from the 70s up into, uh, I believe it was 2014, 2015, I think. When it was, it was located, it was uh, realized the value of it, and then ended up going to auction. And it sold for $344,000. And from what I've read, it was purchased by um, Tom Hanks and Christopher Nolan and, uh, and donated to the, um, to the Academy. And so then it began the process of being refurbished and restored so it can be put back into, uh, put into the museum. So when they had found it, it was in some pretty horrific shape. So let's go ahead and take a look at some images of how that looked uh, when it was found and before it, it had been restored. All right, so there are some people posing with the model as it was getting ready to go to the auction. You can see just how dirty and worn there's still the connector arm coming out of one of the nozzles. There you can see a piece missing of that ridge section to the right. A lot of dirt in worn parts, as you can see, an actual dirt cake down inside, like that part right there, really filthy. This was not special effects, this was real dirt, real weathering. Uh, and there's a picture of the cockpit, you can see some pieces missing and, and how chewed up the paint is right there, how dirty it is. You can see how dirt is caked inside some of these grooves. 
and some discoloration for sure. There's some actual rust right there on the landing leg, which they certainly had to be repaired as well. So overall, really poor condition when they got it. A lot of the paint was really peeling off and chipping and really dirty and nasty. So quite a bit of restoration had to go into making this look good again. All right, so certainly those images that you saw there of the unrestored ship are really, really bad. And it's, it's got some actual weathering, actual rust, actual dirt. It's, it's in really, really poor condition. So if you come across images of that, don't assume that that's how the weathering looked on the real model on the film. It didn't. And you would be led astray into thinking that you want to make your model look that dirty or that rusted or that poorly in that poor of a shape. Uh, it's certainly not how it looks. So just be cautious. Don't, don't use those as references. They're interesting as far as the history of this model is concerned, but they are certainly not uh, representative of what that model looked like in the film. So, uh, so we talked a little bit about that. Now, Adam was a consultant on the restoration of the model that was found before it was put in the museum. And he said it took about three years for them to fully get it restored. Uh, it was headed up by a man named John Goodson from ILM who did the actual work and other people obviously assisted in work. And from what he describes, quite a bit of the sphere had to be stripped down completely, repainted. They had to find model kits for the parts that were missing and replace the parts. And they used his references as, as a reference, as uh, a good indicator of how the ship is supposed to look and, and really redid the whole thing. And they had to do a lot of work back on the landing gear, which some of it had, had broken. It wasn't working right. Uh, so some considerable, considerable restoration went into place on this model. So from what he describes, uh, and it sounds like it's accurate that the one in the museum today is very close to how it looked at the, when it was filmed. You know, very, very accurate, and they did a great job of restoring it. So if you are fortunate enough to go see that, and I would like to do that, but I don't live in California, unfortunately, then um, by all means, that would be a good resource for you to be able to see. Uh, also, Adam's book is a great resource. It has some really nice pictures that are definitely from Fred Ordway's collection from the filming and the lighting tests of that actual model. So a couple of things to keep in mind. And again, I'm not looking to create any further controversy or drama or whatever, but this model is from a film. So I don't know if your goal is to create a model that looks like the model. My goal is to create a model that looks like it did in the film. But again, it's difficult because uh, as Adam stated, the model was filmed in really bright tungsten uh, filament bulbs or lights that gave it really bright, sh or really sharp shadows and made it really bright. So it, it took, that's why it, it looks more on the white range because it's very brightly lit. Uh, the Discovery was the same way. Discovery, if you see images of it without being lit up by those lights, it's obviously more in the gray range and some very obvious gray panels on it. So the idea was to get a lot of detail from these intricately painted little panels so that your eye tells you that this has a greater scale. And, and that's why I do a lot of the techniques I do as far as the dark painting of a ship and then putting light over it. Because in the end, you end up with an uneven looking painting, which gives you the impression that this is a large vessel and not a tiny little model. You, you could just pay the whole thing light gray and then go back and paint some panels, some, some darker gray, but it's not really gonna look as natural and as blended, and you're not gonna get that uneven tone that you want from it. So, um, also, when you look at the interior, the interior was a set. And so, when they were filming it, they were using studio lights. Uh, I'll show you later in some images, but uh, the cockpit, for example. So, they have some lights in the ceilings and they have some panels that are red, they're not really lighting up that cockpit set to be red. They actually had a studio light with a red gel over it behind it and they could take away different parts or the front of it. They'd take the front off and film from the front or they'd take the back off and film from the back if they wanted to show the cockpit windows. And so they're, they're using movie effects to get what they want to show you. So you're gonna have to be inventive in how you come about and get these same types of images 
from a plastic model that's about the size of a, of a basketball. So, and, and likewise, in the passenger section, um, a lot of the time we see it under limited lighting and it's made darker because the idea is that Haywood Floyd is the only person traveling on this ship which could hold 24 passengers because he's the head of the aeronautical administration and he's on a special mission to get to Clavius base because of the, or Tycho, because of the monolith and he needs to get up there. So he has VIP status. No one else is on this flight except the crew. And so they're not gonna put on all the lights in the ship and oftentimes you see different states of it. Um, I, you never see the, the middle ring lit up, you just see the outer ring of lights lit up. And at one point, they even have the lights over the elevator off and I think the lights on the floor off. So he's kind of in darkness and there's darkness behind him, but there's only the lights overhead in the outer ring that he's looking outside and looking at the moon. So you have to look at all these elements. And in the end, I'm going to paint mine and I'm painting mine in order to look like it did somewhat in the film. And, and when you look through those windows and you see the lights in the passenger section of the cockpit, I want it to look like it would look in the film from the set. So uh, certainly you're welcome to do whatever colors or whatever images you would like. Just keep in mind that uh, there are good resources out there and there are ones that you want to avoid. So by all means, do not use the images from the really badly, dirty, weathered, old, beat up, Aries that was found that's going to lead you astray. Um, he also mentioned a few things which I think are important. Those, um, those panels in the windows are actually black. So I've gone back and repainted mine because I had shown earlier in this video that I painted them a dark gray. Uh, and it makes a big difference. It really adds to the shadows. And in addition, when the lights are on in the cockpit and in the passenger section, it's going to give a good contrast and it's going to definitely show how that looks and it's going to look a lot more realistic. So I went back and redid those. Uh, he is working on a, I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be, if it's a diagram or some kind of picture or something from his resources that are going to show the panel placement of the darker panels around the sphere part and he's going to release that. So. If I were still working on mine, I would go back and try to make mine more accurate and paint the panels, you know, as they appear on the ship. But uh, I didn't really do that. And at this point, to go back and repaint the whole thing and do it again, I'm not really going to take that step. But, uh, but certainly when that becomes available, um, he's going to put it out there. I think on the RPG he mentioned, but he's going to make it available to me. And he did give me permission that I could pro provide it to anyone else if they're interested. If you want to use that as a reference to see where those panels are. Um, and, uh, and we talked about the, um, the colors of it and it, it ultimately it is a very, very, very light gray. And a lot of times they used paints that were more in the white range, but they added like a drop of, of black into it just to make it a little bit darker. Uh, and then, um, he, they also used, uh, some paints that were only available back then and some paints that are available today. And so, and other materials that were available today. So uh, let me get that information. I'll just kind of let you know the colors of the paints that he had mentioned to me. All right, so what he had told me, and I guess the first one isn't available anymore, but back then in the 60s, it was called Montana Gold Diamond Gray, which was the main, the main coating. And then they also used Humbrol, Humbrol, H-U-M-B-R-O-L, light aircraft gray as the paneling, which I believe is still available, he said. So you could use something else similar, but it's, it's basically a very light gray over the whole ship. And then it has those panels that are the light aircraft gray that are, you know, kind of call outs in it. Uh, the point he mentioned, which I think is important, is that the engines, those six sided, I think it's six sided little cone parts with the nozzles in it, they are not just fully black. They're pretty much the same light gray as the rest of it, but they have obvious streaks of black that go into it. Uh, inside of the nozzles are black, but the nozzle rings and the rest of it are still what would have been like the lighter gray and just some weathering. So you don't want to just plaster that with black. Uh, you're going you're gonna to do more intric intricate weathering in order to make that look more accurate. Now, the engines certainly have a whole lot more weathering and streaks and things like that, which they would have. But again, they're still around the same tone 
as the rest of the ship. So I'm gonna end up lightening those back up a bit and, uh, and working on those in the, in the future and getting it back to where it's supposed to be. So um, if you wanna go ahead and uh, get a copy of his book, it doesn't, I'm not uh, involved in any profit for these. I purchased my copy from him directly and uh, it's, it's certainly still available in the second edition. Uh, I think it runs about $70. Highly recommend it if you're wanting to get some more resources, not only for the Aries, but also for the, um, the other ships that are in there and get some ideas from them uh, and, and use that as a great resource. So it's a great book and it has a lot of good info in it about that as well. So uh, go ahead and continue watching and I will be putting some of these into effect when I do the rest of it. All right, so to give you a better idea, let me go ahead and show you uh, the book that I got from Adam. And again, I'm not sponsored by him in any way. Uh, he was just a great resource. It was fantastic talking to him, and I really love his book, so I highly recommend it. But uh, I, it, I don't make anything off of that. If you want to get it, it's a great resource for you. Uh, but uh, I don't want to make you think that I'm doing any kind of promotion on his behalf because that's, it's just mainly him giving me some fantastic information Give me, he gave me permission to share any of the things we talked about. So it's definitely really good to have some history of this, uh, of this ship. So let's take a look at his book. All right, so here is the book from Adam Johnson, 2001, The Lost Science. You can see a very large book. I guess you would call this a, a coffee table book, which is perfect for the subject matter that you're getting a lot of photos from the film. Sorry for the shakiness. I have the, I'm using a uh, tripod mechanism and it's just precariously put onto here. I have to get pretty far away to see this. So as you can see from the, from the cover, uh, the Frederick Ordway, the third collection, uh, he was the scientific consultant for 2001. So he had a lot of this if, I think pretty much every, most of this came from his collection, photos that he had kept and various things that he had available to show the different images from the film. So we'll kind of take a good, we'll take a look inside here. Adam signed that for me, which is pretty awesome. All right. So what I really like about this is that there's a lot of concept art and concept information. You've got some really nice pictures. Now these are in black and white because they were doing light testing uh, for filming of these various models. So here's the, the various nuclear satellites or whatever they're supposed to be. So some really nice shots of those. Really nice detail on these. Some images of the actual models. So that's pretty cool. We didn't really see a lot of shots of these from the film, but they played a little bit of a role in it, for sure. All right, then we go into the Orion space plane. Some really nice shots of that. Some different images kind of giving you the idea of, of some of the weathering or the gray panels, that sort of thing. So it would be a great resource if you were looking to paint this. I'll probably use this when they release the very large one for Mobius as well and do a much better painting job on that than I did on my tiny one from them. All right, the Titov shuttle, which we don't really see in the film. The Space Station 5. I'm not gonna go through the whole book, I'm just kind of giving you an idea, but we're getting to the, the Ares shuttle right here. Sorry for the noise outside there. Yep. All right, so here's some really good shots of it showing it in space or showing like it's supposed to be in space and showing how it was filmed. So pretty cool. And a lot of the times it was filmed in shadow, as you can see, with a harsh, sharp, um, bright spot where it was hit with the tungsten uh, lights to give it those those sharp shadows. And here's a little 
brighter images of it. You got some images on the inside of it. Not in color, but there are plenty of color ones out there and available. All right, pictures of the cockpit. There is Fred Ordway sitting in the cockpit. Certainly some other information about it. A lot of the information here is kind of interesting where it's talking about the, um, the fictional ship. It's talking about how big it would be, what kind of engines it has, how it, you know, what type of amenities are inside of it, that kind of thing. So that's kind of a cool idea, the backstory of it. So, all right. But a fantastic book. Quite a lot of really nice images. I really like this image of the centrifuge. If you ever wanted to do your own version of it, you can see how everything's placed. It's pretty cool. Very nice indeed. Very well done. So an excellent resource, absolutely. And if you're like me and your biggest passion of this film are the realistic spaceships and how they're presented, then uh, this is an indispensable resource for you. He does have a second uh, volume out. I'm not exactly sure what's in that particular one, but, uh, but that's out there and available as well. So I highly recommend this. All right. Uh, for right now, I'm going to move away from the exterior of the ship, and I'm going to go ahead and start working on the interior and working to get that done and, um, and trying to get those colors to where they need to be as far as that. And also using some other techniques, uh, one that I had talked about in, the, um, in my video for the IPMS convention, where I got some gray, uh, not gray, some, some ready grass, green grass mat from, from Evergreen. Um, not from Evergreen, I'm sorry. From Woodland Scenics, uh, which, um, which I'm gonna go ahead and show here and show how I use that in order to make the carpet. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And um, I neglected to film talking about the, the grass mat before I went into what I was doing with it. So I'm going to go ahead and insert in here a part of the video from the IPMS uh, convention video where I talked about that grass mat. And then I'll show you what I did as far as the, uh, as the carpet is concerned. All right. All right. The last thing I got is this sheet. And it's called Ready Grass. And it's a, this is kind of a, a thin, very thin styrene plastic backing and it's 12 and a half inches by 14 and 7 eighths but what it's mainly for is you make a project out of it and it looks supposed to look like grass and I guess apparently you can mold it if you heat it over a surface you can cut it of course with scissors uh, now the thing I like about it is that it's very even consistency it's very smooth it's almost like a sandpaper but what I'm going to use it for, or try to use it for, is to put this on the floor of the passenger compartment in the Ares 1B to imitate carpeting. I've seen a couple of other options or a couple of other techniques used by Lou Del Masso. This is pretty cool because I can paint it to make it look uh, probably a rubber black or a black for the floor of it. But if I can come up with a method for cutting it out to fit onto the floor, the only issue is those little raised platforms that the seats fit on that I have to cut around in order to put it in place. And because it is backed by a styrene plastic, I should be able to glue it down fairly easily to the plastic and uh, secure it on there. So, so I want to get in play with that and see if that works out well for that. Uh, two things. One, it'll give me a carpeted look, but also it'll cover up the two really major seams on either side where the two halves of that floor join together. So, all right. So in order so, to be able to cut out the, uh, the green grass uh, carpet looking material to fit this piece, I took a picture of it and I put it into my Silhouette software and I'll show you that here in a second. Silhouette's my, my vinyl cutter. So this is, the, this is the sheet that you put in with the piece of vinyl. It's self-adhesive. There's a, a piece you peel off. 
you put the vinyl on it this goes through the machine and actually cuts out the image so I've laid this on here to get an idea of the size of it and it has a nice grid mark it has some some inches marked off on it and uh, then I put it inside let me go ahead and show you what it looks like in the software All right, so pardon the glare and this is um, the software is silhouette studios it's the software that came with my silhouette vinyl cutter and so I put the image in it and at first I went in and I used an option to just kind of trace around. It did a good job tracing around the edge of it. I did have to trim off these excess pieces because I just want the inside part. I don't want the overhang lips that go together. Now keep in mind, this piece and the, the right side piece are exactly the same, they're just flipped. So when they, when they molded this, they just duplicated it in a very clever way in fact so that this little piece of stairs goes into that piece of stairs. This part goes into this part down here and they just reverse each other. But in the end, they go together and they're both exactly the same part. So if I make one, I just flip it around and I have two. Well, I cut out two and they'll be exactly the same. So the main thing I wanna do is create a template with the vinyl that will have these raised platforms cut out for where the seats go and also the inner area where the where the stairs are going to go because none of that's going to be a part of that carpet either i have to go back and look at the stills i think the steps are carpeted but i will have to take a look and see i know that they are a dark color and then the the insides of the steps are are supposed to be lit in white and certainly the rest of this is going to stay white and then these these paneled in here, they're kind of leather, so they're gonna be they're gonna be painted separately. So basically, I wanna just have a piece that cuts out where the stairs are, cuts out around this whole circle, and cuts around these little pieces here. So what I did was I went back, and it's hard to take a picture from my laptop, but I went back and I traced around all of those little pieces by overlaying this onto here and then just going around and cutting it. And then that way, uh, now what I can do is size it correctly to fit onto this piece, as I just showed on that, that mat. As long as I line it up with the right grid marks, it'll be the right size. And then I can cut it out in vinyl and make sure that it fits this piece. And then it'll make a nice template for me to cut out that, um, that grass material that looks like carpet, so, all right. All right, so there's my first attempt. You can see the, the outlines of that. So let me go ahead and peel that off, put it onto here. It's not gonna be permanent, of course, but I just wanted to make sure that it fits. That way I can do any adjustments, and then I'll just print two of them and they get, just get reversed, so, all right. All right, so not too shabby for the first attempt. Now I did have to snip out those parts for those uh, connectors right there. I will have to figure out at some point, obviously the, the carpeting is not going to go all the way out to the edge of this because you're going to have the, the other side wall pieces in here, the yellow ones that are going to come up through this. <clears throat> so they're going to obscure that. Um, and plus it's okay if I have a little bit off on some of these because I know with the seats that they're going to cover up some of those edges. Let me get one of the chairs and I'll show you here. All right, so there's the chair. So a little bit of an overhang. And what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm going to paint around these with the dark gray. Well, the I'm probably gonna use a rubber black. So I will paint around these with rubber black and paint these platforms the yellow before I apply the carpeting. So, I'll make sure that the part underneath here where any gap might be is going to be the same rubber black. So the only difference is going to be a little bit of the of the carpeting material that's not going to be 100% on it. Because it's going to be tricky to make these perfectly around that. But that's pretty darn close right there. That's a pretty good job. And now that I look, those seats have ridges on them. or Not seats, those stairs have ridges on them. So I don't think those are going to be carpeted but they are probably going to be the same rubber black. And then the, um, the sides of them are going to stay white because they're supposed to be lit up. And then obviously those panels right there are supposed to be 
a dark, a little bit different color. So I might just try to use a little different color than the, um, than the rubber black. We'll see. Cause that's supposed to be, I guess, kind of a leather padding sort of thing. The bottom is going to stay white. And then those little lines there have some kind of color on them. I'll have to look and see. Probably the sides of the stairs as well. I'm going to have to do, look at some screenshots and figure it out. But All right, but that concept will work. So I might tweak it just a little bit more. But as long as I get a template on it, I can then print two of them. Oops, because part of my chair is not glued on. And I can, um, and then I can use it to put onto the, the carpeting material that I'm going to use in order to rep replicate that. So, all right. All right, so I had a, um, a piece of this that previously from another project that I was doing. So I had some scraps of it and I went ahead and did a test and just stuck down the vinyl. Pulled off a little bit of it, but no big deal. But uh, it worked out really well. Now, of course, you have to be careful. I want to make sure that it fits. And so some of it I had to go back with an X-Acto knife and trim it and make sure it goes around it right. So, But I think this is going to work well in a concept. So let me go ahead and get a coating of, of uh, rubber black onto this test piece. Put it down, and I just want to see how that's going to look once I get it painted. And this is still just a proof of concept. All right, so at first I painted it with the rubber black. And as you saw in the previous stills, um, it was really dark and I didn't like it. It was too dark on here and I didn't like the contrast. It didn't make it look too realistic. So I went back and I sprayed it with the dark gray over top of it. And I think that looks a lot better. And I think that'll go better with the other accents because there will be some black. There's black in that dome at the top. I think the elevator might be black. I'm gonna have to look and see, uh, but um, Definitely, these are going to be painted, probably the dark gray as well, as and also the steps, except for the backs of them. But everything else around here is going to be gray. And the circle down here is going to stay white, or I'm going to paint it white. But, but I think that's going to work out well. I like that a lot better. It definitely has the look of carpet. And I think that's going to go well with the rest of it. So, okay, fantastic. All right, so I printed out two more of the templates and I put them back to back onto the the new good sheet of the of this grass um, and I cut out one whole piece because I needed it to be one whole piece not just a half that was just a test and so I got it honed into where it needs to be and it fits on there is a little bit of pressing down around those but it shouldn't be a problem and then I can glue it so before I do that of course I want to paint it I'm going to paint it the dark gray, but also what I want to do is I want to go ahead and paint the rest of this inner part dark gray, this and the stairs because they're dark gray. Um, and the, the inner side of the steps are actually white. So what I'm going to do once that's all dried and everything, I have this white self-adhesive stripping, which is the right size. I'm just going to cut out little pieces and stick it on the back of those so that they'll look white. Um, as you can see, I made a mask for the bottom because this whole bottom circle is going to stay white as well. And there's just some little ribs that go across that I think, I forget what color they are. I'm going to take a look, but I think they might be like a metallic or something. So um, what I'm going to also do, uh, as you can see, I took the vinyl that I used to cut out the, uh, the grass and I stuck it back down because I don't want to put paint over top of the plastic where I'm going to glue down the carpet. 
So I want to keep that as clean as I can, but I want to paint these platforms. Now, rather than just painting them yellow and trying to get the right color, which is a darker yellow, I'm going to go ahead and paint them the dark gray along with this part down here to be dark gray. I'm going to kind of mist on a little bit lighter on these, not quite as heavy. But then I'm going to go over the dark gray with some yellow, just standard bright yellow. And the idea is that just like I did on the ship, when you start with a darker color and you spray on a lighter color, it naturally makes it darker. Plus it gives it a little more of a, of a, a random look to it so that it doesn't look quite so just one stark color. And so I'm testing it on these first because these aren't going to be seen as much. And worst case scenario, if they don't look right, I can just spray more yellow until they look yellow. But, um, but I'm going to try that technique. And then, um, and this, of course, is going to stay gray down here. And um, so what I'll probably end up doing is I have a couple of things. Like I have this piece that was from the grass. So I can always put that down into here yeah that'll work i can even just tape over it in the edges when i want to paint these yellow so i don't get any yellow down in that part there so it works out really nice these masks work out really good for me to do what i need to do and um and i was able to create them myself so let me go ahead and get some dark gray tamiya on this and then we'll go ahead and let that dry and start working on some of the yellow <laughs> Right, so you can see from the previous stills, I, uh, I masked off, I painted the dark gray down in the stairwells and uh, left the part white there uh, where I had masked off in the bottom. And uh, I went ahead and also did the dark gray on the platforms for the chairs. And then I did some Tamiya flat yellow over top of those and got kind of a close approximate of the dark yellow that I wanted. And, uh, and I began doing that on the chairs themselves to try to match them up and uh, also some of the sidewalls and uh, ran into a problem. So I had run out of Tamiya flat yellow and I used primarily Tamiya paints uh, for my painting. So I went to my local hobby shop. They did not have any. In fact, they cannot get any until sometime in late June because of the supply chain issues that are going on. So a lot of the main colors are just out of stock and unavailable. I even tried to go online and was having a hard time finding it. So. I picked up some different paint. I got a medium yellow from uh, Vallejo Model Air. And I also got some flat yellow from their, their model colors as well. I've had trouble with the model colors because they're so thick trying to airbrush them. You really have to thin them down quite a lot to be able to not clog up your airbrush. Uh, the Model Air I had a few issues with at first because it's very thin and it's a lot different than I'm used to with the Tamiya's. It goes over great uh, when you paint it over something white. It gives you really nice smooth colors and it doesn't need a lot of coverage either. But when I tried doing it over the dark gray like I did with the Tamiya, it just was not bringing out the color that I wanted and it was looking kind of watery. So I went back over, remasked off the floor panels and some of the other things I had started painting and painted them with a flat white so I brought it back up to a light gray. And then I found that painting the Vallejo medium yellow over the light gray covers a lot better and it looks a lot more like I want it to be. So I had filmed some, uh, some video with the other method, which I'm not really going to show because I had to go back and redo it all. So let me show you some stills of, um, of some of the, the images that I painted of the chairs and of the side walls. And then I'll go ahead and show those completed and kind of show you how those look. All right.
All right, so here is where I'm gonna leave the yellow for right now. Uh, it looks a little more yellow when you film it under certain lighting conditions, uh, but the chairs are still pretty dark yellow. Now, I, um, I wasn't, I was thinking they're still a little too dark, so I put them together and I did a little lighting test on it to see how they looked under the lights because the ultimate goal here is that everything together is going to look like the image in the film. So that would mean that you have all the seats in here, you have the lights in the top, you have the, the uh, dark elevator in the middle and the bathrooms, and I did cut out the little part of the, the carpeting to put the bathrooms in. I haven't glued this down yet, but I'm getting ready to. I did paint these side panels, and I used the same process with the gray. Now, these have a little pattern in them, as you can see. Now, the actual ones in the film are, sorry, the whole tube here is a very, very obvious texture, like some kind of cloth texture. So at different times, they appear to be darker than the seats, which are smooth leather. So I think the idea was that they were trying to match them in the film, but they're different materials, so they're going to catch light in different ways. And that's true with a lot of this, uh, depending on how they filmed it, depending on how the lights are hitting it. Sometimes these look like they're the same color. Sometimes these look darker. So uh, just because they have the detail, they naturally look a little darker than the, um, than the chairs. And I can still tweak some of these colors you know, before I'm finally done with it all. But I really need to see it under lights and under the conditions that you're gonna see it through the window before I do any additional lighting or anything like that. But obviously then these are gonna go right in here. And so they're gonna to add to the overall look. So I'm happy with the way this is right now. I'm gonna start working on the ceiling and the ceiling lights and get those all in. Once I get that done and I put it on and I can see how it's all going to look on the inside, then I'm ready to go ahead and finalize any colors on these, uh, on these seats and how I want them to look. Uh, and then um, also receive the stewardess figures in the mail and I should be getting some more figures in the mail. Uh, that are going to be for the pilots and for Haywood Floyd, uh, which I'll probably end up using. Uh, I did get some figures at the IPMS convention, which I played with a little bit that uh, initially I was going to work with, but I'll probably end up using the ones from Shapeways. So I'll show those in a future video uh, for this, but coming along really nicely. Uh, and I'm also working on some ideas for doing the lighting in the ceiling, which I'll go over in my next video. But some fantastic progress, definitely getting to the place where uh, these are all going to go together. Actually, that doesn't go right on there. There's another piece for the TV sections and things. So, oh, one other thing I did want to point out is the bottom, you can see there on that uh, sidewall, I left the bottom edge dark gray because if you look at stills in the in the film that part is not part of the yellow bands it's they look like some kind of vents they may not, they might be lights it's hard to tell they're not lit up or anything but definitely gray so i left those dark gray and then i just painted the yellow at the top um, in addition i got the um Woodland Scenics version of their matte adhesive, which I think definitely you'd want to use if you get that. It's really kind of cool. What you do with it is you scuff up the plastic or the smooth part. You then brush this down, and I have some cheap brushes that I got from uh, Hobby Lobby that are disposable. You, um, you paint this on pretty well, and then you pretty much just let it dry, and it stays tacky. And then you press down the mat onto it, and it really holds nice and firm. Let me show you. I did a test underneath just to uh, make sure that it was going to work. 
So there it is right there. Nice and firm, nice and flat. And it's not going anywhere. It's it's come it's not coming off anytime soon. So I think that'll be really good to secure that down onto the plastic and uh and not have it like pulling up on edges. I was gonna use like some Tamiya glue or something, but uh, it turns out that the bottom of this mat is vinyl and not styrene, as I've been saying throughout the video. It's vinyl, which is, you know, still a plastic type of a material. But uh, this glue is definitely made for that purpose. So I recommend that if you're going to follow this procedure. So, all right. Fantastic. All right. So I was doing some final editing for this video and getting it finished up and ready to upload today. And I got a message from Adam Johnson uh, letting me know that he did complete um, his his diagrams uh, of the the pattern or the placement of the various darker panels on the on the top of the sphere. So he went ahead and sent those to me, and I will include those here in a moment and show you them. And then uh, I don't know of a way to put them into YouTube that would be a file. So if you're interested, if you let me know, I'll be glad to send that to you. And he said that I certainly have permission to do so. Uh, I'll also be posting these on uh, some Facebook groups that I belong to. Uh, one of them is a group that I am the, um, uh, the, I guess they call it the moderator administrator on, uh, for the building of the, the Aries 1B from Mobius. So I will include a link in the description for that as well. Certainly if you want to go ahead and join that and check it out. And, uh, and I will post them on there and some other groups as well uh, that I belong to, like the Cult TV Man group. Uh, there's other, some other 2001 groups that I'm on that I post some some date, some content on. So if you want to go ahead and use those, absolutely. Um, he did say that they were kind of crude. I don't know if he's doing any of their versions, but I think they're perfect. They're beautiful. They definitely show the panels that would be the, uh, the slightly darker gray. And he did confirm that, um, uh, that you can't get that Montana gold anymore, but he mentioned that generally... I think what they might have used is a humbrol white and they just put like a drop. Well, it depends on how much you have of it, of course, but just a little bit of just a, a touch of black in it to make it really, really light gray. That would be your base coat. And then the, um, the humbrol light aircraft gray would be for the panels. And they're all pretty much the same, the same color. You could vary, vary the, the shading and make some a little darker, some a little lighter. Uh, to make that that variation uh, and certainly if you want to use the method that I've used where you make them a little darker and then mist right over it as well I think you would get the same approach but uh, let me go ahead and show those images and they do show the placement from the actual model where those darker panels were so and then that'll wrap up this video for this week uh, I have a lot more progress done uh, but I didn't want, this is already a pretty long video, so I'm going to save that for the next version, but quite a lot done on the interior. And if you go into my Facebook group, you'll see that I have some images of the uh, the cockpit and some lighting for it and also the um, the passenger section. So, all right, but coming along really well. Mm -hmm.